Welcome to this lecture of uh, refractories. In this lecture, we will discuss about the slag attack and kind of refractories in use under the areas of chemical process utilities. Now, again, uh, when we go into detail of uh, the topic in question for today's uh, lecture, let us have a brief outlook that what we discussed in previous lecture. So, we discussed about uh, the production of uh, refractories. Uh, and in the previous lecture, we discussed about the firing aspect of uh, uh, refractories. Then we discussed about the thermodynamic principles including the free energy, enthalpy, entropy, chemical equilibrium, chemical stability, etcetera. Then we discussed about uh, three stages of corrosion, stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. Now, in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about the mo various models for slag attack on refractories uh, like conic model, the model of Endel, Fehling and Klee. And uh, apart from this, uh, we will discuss about the various refractories including silica, alumina, alumina silicate, chrome, magnesite. Let us discuss about the various model for slag uh, attack on refractories. So, the first model in this aspect is uh, Koenig's model. In 1971, Koenig related the corrosion rate of refractories in Bosch area of a blast furnace wall to the temperature gradient in the wall. Now, this analysis includes uh, an assumption that the temperature gradient controls the temperature at the slag refractory interface. Now, because the shell of a blast furnace is water cooled in the area of the Bosch, Koenig's analysis is appropriate for thin wall refractory with a steep temperature gradient fixed by the process that is called furnace uh, process temperature and cold phase temperature. Now, Koenig created a heat balance by assuming that the heat flux into the refractory surface must equal the heat flux through the furnace shell. Now, if uh, heat flux into the refractory surface exceeds the heat flux out of the shell, the interface temperature must increase causing the increased corrosion rate until the heat balance is maintained once again. Now, the slag refractory interface temperature becomes Tc. Uh, when the heat flux into the refractory equals the heat flux out of the shell. The actual temperature is about Tc. The rapid corrosion uh, of the refractory is expected until a dynamic equilibrium is once again achieved. Now, here you see that uh, this is uh, this uh, figure reflects the Koenig's thermal model. Here you are having the, uh, the furnace enclosure, then slag and refractory working line, this zone and this one is the shell insulation and this is the insulation and this is the open environment. So, if we plot uh, the temperature versus thickness, you can see, you can observe this particular behavior of the curve. Now, if uh, we take this particular curve in cognizance, so the from the heat transfer theory, the relationship of uh, K effectiveness can be written as K effectiveness is equal to 1 upon Fe plus Xr over Kr plus Xi upon Ki plus Xhh uh, over Ksh. And now, at equilibrium, it is quite obvious that uh, Q1 will be equal to Q2 and uh, T f T r would be equal to T c. So, the equilibrium thickness that is referred as x r in this uh, particular uh, figure, um, this can be represented as x r is equal to k r into 1 over f f, here you see that this one, into T c minus T e over T f minus T s minus f e plus x i over k i plus x s h over k s h. Now, Koenig's relationship for the equilibrium thickness, this provides the, the different insights. Number 1, the equilibrium thickness x r, this increases linearly as the thermal conductivity of the refractory increases. Number 2, the equilibrium thickness x r increases as the thermal conductivity of the insulation increases. Now, the equilibrium thickness x r increases as the T c of the refractory slag system increases. That is as more slag resistant refractories are used, 
the equilibrium thickness xr changes as the heat transfer into the lining or uh, or out of the shell changes that is the film coefficient changes now another model that is uh, uh, called as the model of indel failing and cle now the indel failing and cle developed an empirical relationship for the slag corrosion in a thick walled refractory lined vessel with the slag flowing down a vertical refractory wall now in the corrosion studies the authors they used an uh, arrangement where a solid fuel burned within a reaction chamber that is uh, liberating heat with resulting ash or slag impingement on walls so the mathematical relationship for slag attack can be written as r is equal to cl not into t to the power 2 by 3 over eta to the power 8 by 9 into fha to the power 1 over 9 now question arises that what are the different terms being used in this uh, um, endel failing and cle equation now there here r is uh, the slag attack rate and usually it is represented uh, with the units of uh, centimeter per second then l not l not is the solubility of refractory in slag in kilogram of refractory per kilogram of slag now the t is the temperature of the slag or temperature of the hot phase now f f is the fraction of ash adhering to the refractive wall this eta is the slag viscosity in poisons now this h is the heat liberated in the furnace and it is represented as the kilo calorie per meter cube in hour now this a is the ash content of the fuel in gram per gram of ash and this c is the constant of furnace geometry now the empirical model of endel failing and cle for the thick wall refractory lining provides different information now one is that there is a very strong dependence of refractory corrosion rates on hot phase temperature now second is the slag attack rate increases linearly with the solubility of the refractory in the slag third is that the in the essence of the corrosion rate is inversely proportional to slag viscosity now let's talk about the silica refractory now silica bricks have composition of sio2 less than uh, equal to 95% and al2o3 less than 1% and alkalis 0.3 percent approximately raw material for the silica bricks are ganister that is clay bonded sandstone used for the furnace construction silica content is 98 percent and expensive to mine quartzite sandstone bonded with the colloidal silica hard material and sand contains the quartzite and flint the quantity of the bricks depends upon the crystal size of the initial raw material that is called rock when the crystals are fine uh, then the porosity becomes low after the firing and low porous bricks have good mechanical properties allotropes of uh, silica now there are 15 allotropes exist of silica and most of them are metastable transformation do not change their volume too much the alpha quartz is the natural occurring form of silica and on heating this at say 573 degrees celsius transformed into beta quartz with rapid and reverse action now beta quartz is stable up to 867 degrees celsius and if heating rate is faster than it may remain uh, for few hundred degree more it can further convert into uh, tridimide in a slow process this conversion can be enhanced by using a mineralizer such as calcium tungstate as catalyst now tridimide transforms to to um, cristobalite at 1470 degree celsius temperature in a slow process and there is a contraction of say 1.95% the transformed uh, cryotolite becomes stable up to melting point of say 1723 degree celsius the beta quartz and tridimide can directly transform to glass if heating rate is a bit high beta quartz transform to a glass at 1450 degree celsius and tridimide to glass 
uh, takes place at 1680 degrees Celsius. The liquid silica can transform into the glass on fast cooling. Now, if temperature maintained at high but below the melting point, then devitrification of the glass takes place and transform to beta crystallite. On cooling, the beta crystallite is transformed into tridimite at 1470 degree Celsius temperature. Now, in temperature range from 275 to 200 degree Celsius, it transforms to alpha crystallite and which is metastable state. The transformation is accompanied by 3.15 percent decrease in volume. The highest temperature form of tridimite is beta 4. Now, as beta quartz transformation is a slow process, so it undergoes metastable transformation when cooled. Now, beta 3 at say 476 degrees Celsius and beta 2 at 210 degrees Celsius and beta 1 at 163 degrees Celsius and alpha at um, 117 degrees Celsius. The contraction in the volume for beta 2 to beta 1 transformation is 0.18 percent and for beta for, uh, 1 to alpha is 0.45 percent. The other transformation have negligible volume changes. Now, as the transformation involved in silica, so the volume changes, heating and cooling of silica bricks should be conducted very slowly, which ensures equilibrium transformation and not result in any damage in the form of cracking. Let us talk about uh, the manufacturing of silica bricks. Now, there are uh, the general steps involved in the manufacturing of silica bricks, um, they are the raw materials are crushed to angular particles uh, which helps in better packing during the compaction. Now, then addition of lime water uh, that containing 1.7 percent of CaO for bonding in particles. The lime water aids compaction by imparting plasticity and then dry pressing is carried out uh, to get green compact. Then firing at uh, 1500 degrees Celsius for at least 2 weeks here the various volume changes takes place during the transformation. The slow process of firing ensures that the brick obtained are undamaged. The transformation of alpha to beta quartz is a fast process. So, heating beyond 573 degree Celsius temperature must be slow. The cooling from 300 to 100 degree Celsius also slow for metastable transformation of crystobalite to, to tridimite. The firing at high temperature for long time is called hard firing. This ensures that no quartz is left in the material and the density of the bricks tell us about the proportion of phases. For single phase, the density of quartz is 2650 kilogram per meter cube for tridimite. 2260 kilogram per meter cube and for crystal bolite 2320 kilogram per meter cube. The property of the silica brick is very high, refractory is under load. The addition of uh, CaO gives rise to monotactic uh, reaction in SiO2 CaO. This reaction will take place at around 1690 degree Celsius temperature. There are various properties attributed to the silica bricks. Now, the silica brick have the refractiveness of 1710 degree Celsius, spalling resistance is very good above 300 degree Celsius. Now, these are acidic bricks and have the resistance to the basic slag. The porosity is around 15 percent in high duty bricks and low permeability. The apparent density of silica brick is 1800 kilogram per meter cube that is fairly light and the semi silica bricks have better spalling resistance than the silica bricks. Now, uses of silica bricks, um, it have application in roof uh, of open hearth steel making furnace. Another important use is in the making of roof and upper checker wall work uh, of uh, cowper stoves. Now, these stoves and preheat air blast to the blast furnace where they work as a heat exchanger. It has a use in electric arc furnaces, cupolas and soaking pits. Their resistance to slagging makes them useful in soaking pits. The semi-silica bricks are cheaper and used as a backing for silica bricks. 
The semi silica bricks are used in coke oven, kiln roofs, and in flues. Let us talk about the alumina. It is useful, abundant, and a simple oxide refractory. It is ionic in bond character. The powder is compactness and sintered in the temperature range of 1200 to 1800 degrees Celsius. The alumina parts are made by the application of heat and pressure at the same time. The densification of powder compacts by these methods brings shrinkage. The linear shrinkage range from 5 to 20 percent. Let us talk about the manufacturing of alumina refractory. The alumina is extracted from bauxite ore which is a mixture of two hydrated uh, such as uh, gypsite Al2O33H2O and diaspore Al2O3H2O. The purification of bauxite ore is done by Bayer's process which involves the solution and precipitation method. Now by precipitation aluminum hydroxide is obtained and by dehydration the aluminum hydroxide alpha Al2O3 or corundum is obtained. The process have purity of 99.9 percent and the major impurities are Na2O, SiO2, Fe2O3, TiO2, CaO and GO2 and B2O3. The commercial alumina is made from aluminum alum. High purity alumina can be can also be obtained from high purity aluminum metal by chemical treatment process and the purity can be higher as 99.99 percent. Now when we talk about the alumina, the properties of alumina is divided into four different headings like general, mechanical, electrical and thermal. The general property the alumina possesses that it has the melting point of 2015 degrees Celsius it can be used up to 1900 degrees Celsius. The process is less susceptible to thermal shock. The slag resistance is poor especially towards the FeO and basic slag unaffected by gas except F2 and it has the good resistance towards the fused uh, alkalis. Let us talk about the mechanical properties. The strength of alumina depends on the density and that is higher the density greater will be the strength. The high strength of the material causing failure by brittle fracture uh, as uh, dislocation movement becomes difficult. The theoretical strength of the alumina should be greater than 7000 megapascal. The alumina is brittle material and its actual strength is determined by the maximum size of the cracks it contains. Greater is the size of the cracks, the lesser will be the strength. The hardness of aluminum oxide is very high as measured by the Wicker's hardness tester. The high hardness represents the material to be less plastic. The value of elastic modulus is around 4.09 into 10 to the power 5 megapascal and decrease in the elastic modulus is linear up to 1000 degrees Celsius. The grain size is another factor which affecting the strength of the material. The strength is inversely proportional to the square root of grain size. Let us talk about the electric properties. The sintered alumina provided excellent insulating properties. So it is used as insulator in electrical and electronic industries. The electric conductivity of alumina is of 20 orders of the magnitude smaller than the metallic conductor. It is also doped to use as a, a semiconductor. At temperature greater than 1500 degrees Celsius, it behaves like an intrinsic semiconductor. The activation energy is about 5.5 electron volt. Below this temperature, it behaves like extrinsic semiconductor with an activation energy of 2.5 to 5.5 electron volt. Let us talk about the thermal properties. It uh, have the high melting point which makes it useful in refractory. It is also useful in glass tank refractory. Now creep is another thermal property of alumina and it depend upon uh, the stress, grain size, porosity and impurity content. The porosity may increase uh, the creep rate. The dense alumina finds use at high temperature because of its low permeability towards gases. Uses of alumina refractory, it used commonly in the form of tubes and crucibles. 
the fused alumina mixed with clay and produces abundant cement. Now, it is used in the laboratories and it is useful in the range of 1500 to 1700 temperature degree Celsius temperature application. Let us talk about the alumina silicate refractory. Now, it is based on Al2O3 SiO2 system. Here the fire bricks is common alumino silicate refractory which contains 38 percent of Al2O3 mixture of two phases such as uh, uh, mullet and um, silica. At 1545 degree Celsius temperature the mixture undergoes eutectic transformation that is 5 wave percent of Al2O3. After immediate of the transformation the fire brick may contain mullet and liquid with eutectic composition. The mullet present in the fire bricks are needle shaped crystals similar to tridimite um, in silica brick. These needle shaped crystals interlock among themselves. Due to this interlocking, it is uh, it is so rigid and it, uh, it can uh, retain its strength and rigidity up to 1810 degree Celsius. The strength depends on the percentage of mullet present and that is 20 to 55 percent. Above the eutectic temperature, we get liquid in interstices with the mullite needles with 25 percent of Al2O3 and that is siliceous fire bricks contains 70 percent of liquid. Now, as the temperature is increased, the viscosity is reduced, thus the refractoriness is also reduced. In this case, the bricks containing 45 percent Al2O3 and the amount of mullite is 60 uh, percent after the eutectic temperature. The brick retain its shape after this eutectic temperature. Now, and an increase in the temperature further, the liquid percentage slowly increases at around 1700 degree Celsius and it is about 80 percent. High alumina brick can have refractoriness at 1700 degree Celsius, but RUL value will be insufficient for any load bearing application beyond the eutectic temperature. Now, here you see that the equilibrium diagram of Al2O3 SiO2 system wherein the composition of various alumina silicate refractory is marked including the composition of semi silica. Let us talk about the fire bricks. It is the regular brick of furnace designer and most common refractory which is made up of fire clay. China clay is also used to make the bricks and these bricks have enhanced properties than the fire bricks. If we talk about the fire clay, it forms with the decomposition of the, uh, the uh, ingenious rock. Now, decomposition is caused by the geological processes which take place over many years. The type of fire clay formed are based upon uh, the rock type and geological process. Now, this fire clay comes from granite which is uh, a acid rock and that contains feldspar. The feldspar is a group of minerals such as uh, aluminosilicate of uh, potassium, sodium and calcium. One of the hydrate fire clay is a kaolinite which have structure of alternate layers of uh, SiO4 tetrahedral and AlOH6 octahedral. Now, two other type of fire clay they are Montmerlonite that is Al2O3, 5SiO2, NH2O, CaMgO and B delta I, that is Al2O3, 3SiO2, 4H2O. Now, let us talk about uh, the manufacturing aspect of alumina silicate refractory fire bricks. For manufacturing of fire bricks, slow drying is necessary for hand molded bricks to secure it uh, from crack. Now, firing used in manufacturing of the fire brick has three stages smoking, decomposition and full firing. Now, smoking this is uh, 12 to 48 hour stage depending upon the quantity and smoking time increases with quantity. Now, in this stage the temperature rises from 20 to 300 degree Celsius. Decomposition. In this stage, the duration is around uh, 10 to 24 hours with a rise in temperature from 300 to 900 degree Celsius. The heating is performed by the oxidizing flame and the chemisorbed water is removed in this stage 
above 573 degree Celsius temperature, oxidizing flame gasifies carbon and sulfur and escape from the bricks. Full firing. It will take around 12 to 18 hours and the firing temperature is in the range from 1200 to 1400 degree Celsius. The formation of silicate started from 1000 degree Celsius and during heating at fixed firing temperature, silica and alumina attain its high temperature form. High alumina bricks. Now, it contains more than 46 percent of alumina, and the material used for these kind of bricks are silimanite, kyanite, and uh, leucite. Now, these minerals are exist in the rocks and used as mine to get more alumina content. On firing, these bricks contain mullite, glass, and cristobalite or tridimite as the phases. Now, these phases also found in fire bricks. Millite will be higher and fluxes will be lower in the high alumina bricks. Now, these materials are solid at temperature up to 1810 degree Celsius. Let us talk about the properties of alumina silicate refractories fire bricks. Now, with an increase in the alumina content from 25 to 45 percent, the refractoriness of the fire brick increases from 1550 degree Celsius to 1750 degree Celsius. The RUL value ranges from 1200 to 6, 1620 degree Celsius when grow from siliceous fire brick to normal brick and then to aluminous brick. The spelling resistance is poor for siliceous fire bricks, ordinary for brick and good for aluminium. The thermal expansion increases as temperature rises and reaches at a maximum of 1.6 percent of highest temperature. The acid slag resistance is good for all type of fire bricks, but uh, the basic slag resistance is poor for siliceous and ordinary fire bricks, but good for aluminium one. Now, to increase the abrasion resistance, the fire brick are hard fired and which causes the partial vitrification. The vitrification reduces the porosity, so the brick will become harder and more compact, but its spalling resistance is reduced. Grog particles present in the structure also make it harder. Let us talk about the high alumina brick. Uh, with the high content of alumina, the refractiveness and RUL of uh, high alumina bricks are increases. The spalling resistance is good. The cold crushing strength is extremely high. The slagging resistance is fair to good as the alumina content increases. With 50 to 60 percent alumina bricks, there is a resistance to slag and glasses. With 70 percent of alumina, the resistance to FeO and CO is good. Now, the uses of alumina silicate refractories. The fire bricks are used in furnace construction and also in the domestic fireplace and stove. In iron making industries, the fire bricks are found in blast furnace, stuck, Bosch, hearth and ladles. Cowper stoves and blast duct connecting cowper stoves and blast furnaces are also constructed of fire bricks. It has application in the open hearth steel making in the area where the bricks are not exposed to steel making temperature such as checkers of regenerators. The high alumina bricks such as mullite bricks are most durable for all refractories it replaces the fire bricks used in to line the Bosch of blast furnace. Silimanite and andalusite bricks also replaced high quality fire bricks in the lower blast furnace stack. Mullite and andalusite bricks also are used in the upper courses of check work in the regenerators and cowper stoves where hot gases enter these heat exchangers. The high alumina brick also find use in the soaking pits, reheating furnace walls, roofs in hearths and around the doors. These bricks also have application in electric arc steel making furnace crowns. It has the use in the replacement of the silica bricks for wall construction in coke ovens. Let us talk about the chrome magnesite refractories. Now, it contains chromite that is FeO CrO2O3 
with a refractiveness of 1700 to 1850 degrees Celsius and RUL is about 1400 degrees Celsius. Poor spalling resistance and higher thermal conductivity used in the open hearth furnace. Magnesite, that is having the chemical formula of MgCO3 and it is the raw material for magnesia refractory which have the melting point of 2800 degrees Celsius. Refractiveness is about um, 1800 degrees Celsius. RUL ranges from 1450 to 1720 degrees Celsius. Poor spelling resistance, high thermal expansion this used in the basic electric and open hearth furnace under wall roofs. The chrome magnesite and magne uh, magnesite chrome, this chrome content is high and magnesia is low or reverse. These are the dark brown in color and high density of 3 gram per centimeter cube. Porosity varies from 19 to 26 percent. Cold crushing strength is low at uh, 27.6 megapascal used in the open hearth furnace. Bricks used in the glass uptakes, burner zone, back and front wall and roofs. Dolomite. This is the double carbonate of magnesium and calcium refractories and it is having the very high refractiveness is very high that is uh, uh, above 1750 degrees Celsius. RUL is 1450 to 1550 degrees Celsius. Spelling resistance is poor. Slag resistance is poor, have application in open hearth furnace, electric arc furnace. Fosterite, this is the double oxide and mixture of magnesia and silica, refractiveness um, around 1750 degrees Celsius, RUL minimum value is 1550 degrees Celsius, thermal expansion is low, good spelling resistance, have resistance to both acid and basic slags have application in the open hearth back wall, downtakes and top courses of uh, furnaces. So, in this particular chapter, we had uh, discussion about the different bricks and uh, different bricks materials and if you have uh, any doubt or if you have wish to have a further study, we have enlisted couple of references for your convenience. Uh, you can have a look of all these references for your convenience and as per your ease, thank you very much.